Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Questions on British Muslim TV with me, Mohammed Shafiq. We're broadcasting Sky Channel 752 and across social media at British Muslim TV, wherever you are around the world. A very warm welcome. Now, we want you to comment on the big story we're covering tonight. Call us now on 01924 You can message us on the WhatsApp number, which is on your screen now. And if you're watching this on Facebook Live, post your comments and we'll share them on air throughout the programme. Now, Pakistan's elections can be turbulent and unpredicted every time. And 2018 was no different. The prior PML Noon, which is Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, was removed from office by the Supreme Court after being convicted of corruption charges in the aftermath of the Panama Papers leak and replaced by Shahid Kanka Abbasi before a caretaker prime minister was appointed. The general election was held in Pakistan on Wednesday, the 25th of July in 2018. Voters were asked to elect members of the National Assembly and the provincial uh, government's uh, assemblies as well. Now, the ruling PMLN started with an 11-point lead in the polls at the beginning of that particular campaign. Now, by the end of the campaign, the PTI party of Imran Khan finished with a slight lead. And as those votes were counted, PTI scored an historic 31% of the national vote with the governing PML noon on 24%. Now, while seven parties have alleged rigging, they didn't submit any cases to the Supreme Court to date. Many commentators rubbish the allegations of rigging as the Reuters poll suggested a PTI win, which is what actually happened. Now, to date, no case has been proven about those allegations of rigging. And we wait to see what may happen with that. Now, Imran Khan formed a coalition government with various parties and took the oath of office on the 18th of August 2018. From the moment he took office, opposition parties have been determined that he was appointed by the establishment and have launched a campaign and a movement to remove him. Yet three years on, he's still in office. His parties and allies formed governments in the provincial capitals of KPK, Punjab and Balochistan. And on July the 25th, his parties got a landslide victory this year, going from two seats to 26 seats in the Azad and Jammu Kashmir assembly elections. Uh, they have formed their government there in the last few hours. Sardar Abdul Qayyum Niazi is the new Prime Minister of Azad Jammu Kashmir, which is surprising him because nobody knows who he is. Uh, maybe our guests will be able to enlighten us about him. But congratulations to him, Sardar Abdul Qayyum Niazi, who is the new Azad and Jammu Kashmir uh, Prime Minister. Now, as we move to the next two years of his government, what lessons can we learn from his first three years? From load shedding, price rises and inflation, the COVID pandemic, corruption allegations against Imran Khan and his government. Will the opposition parties be able to unite and defeat the captain? Tonight, we devote the whole programme, yes, the whole programme, to reflect on his time in Pakistan, in office, in government, but also look at the main opposition party, Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz. What strategy will they take over the next two years, waiting for that election, and what changes do each of those opposition parties need to ma make to bring in new faces so that they can stand a chance in winning the election, which is in 2023? Let me give you the latest on the pandemic here in the UK. It is that the country has reached the historic milestone of 85 million jabs have been administered. More than 68% of 18 to 29 year olds have now had a first jab, whilst overall 88.6% of all UK adults have had their first job. More than 72.5% are fully protected after having their second dose. Now, concerns have been expressed that the rate of young people getting the vaccine is so low and more needs to be done. Uber, Deliveroo, Bolt will offer free rides and food discounts to young people to get vaccinated. Now, whilst across the pond in America, Joe Biden, the president there, is giving $100 to each young person. Meanwhile, here in the UK, our Prime Minister Boris Johnson is offering a cheeseburger and a 10% discount on your taxi ride. I'll just leave that thought with you. In other news, with the Tokyo Olympics hitting the final sprint this week, Team GB can be so proud uh, of the many medals, including over 15 gold medals that the country has been able to achieve. I'm so proud of the whole team and the nation will welcome them back as we have been doing over the last seven days to the UK with much happiness and appreciation. Now, shortly, the broadcaster, support of the PTI, Pakistan Tehreek-e-Insaf, which means the Party of Justice, 
Mohammed Shafaka joins us live from Sheffield, an international lawyer, PML Noon leader. Amjad Malik joins us live from Rochdale as they go head to head on Pakistan. They'll join us live shortly and will stay with us for the whole program between now and 10 o'clock. We want to hear from you tonight. You can call us on 01924231083 or messages on British Muslim TV across social media. Alternatively, you can send a message on WhatsApp. The message can be about Pakistan, I hope, and a number to send it to is on the screen there. Now, the three questions we're considering tonight that we would like you to answer is, what do you make of Imran Khan's three years as prime minister? Now, the opposition party, Pakistan Muslim League Noon, have been written off in the past, but will the tiger roar back into office in 2023? What are your predictions for that election in 2023? Please share your thoughts on 01924 231083, your messages on WhatsApp, as I keep saying, or post on social media, and we'll get to read some of them throughout the programme. And we'll read through the rest of the programme, should we say, we'll keep you updated about it. Let's welcome both our guests, firstly from Sheffield, the broadcaster, radio presenter and PTI uh, supporter, Mohammed Shafakat. Asalaamu Alaikum, welcome to the show. Wa Alaikum Asalaam, Shafiq, uh, nice to be uh, on your show uh, once again. Uh, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you for having, uh, uh, having the time to come and see us, uh, Shafakat. It's been a while. And from the great town of Rochdale, I, I, I have to say great because obviously Rochdale is where I'm from as well. I'm Jed Malik, the international lawyer and supporter and a close, confident uh, and support and advisor to the former Prime Minister, Nawaz Sharif, me and Nawaz Sharif Saab. Um, and he was recently appointed as the Chief Coordinator of PML uh, Noon International Affairs. Uh, Amjad Malik, Salaam Alaikum and congratulations on your new appointment. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank, thank you, Shafiq. Thank you for um, uh, the opportunity to come and uh, explain our side. And uh, it will be a pleasure uh, to talk to you. Well, let's start with you, Amjad Malik. Let's, look, let's go back. Let's go back to that 2017 and historic verdict of the Supreme Court against Nawaz Sharif. What did you make of it at the time? And was this the beginning of the defeat in the elections that came? Uh, I, th I personally think 2018 um, could have been a, um, a better, fair election. But I think at that time, there was uh, too much involvement, um, some Supreme Court cases and the role of judiciary um, pave way for um, um, uh, some kind of a selection process, I would say. Um, election was not uh, as fair as it could have been. Uh, the uh, pomp and show shown by the, the enthusiasm shown by the public uh, couldn't be translated. But in any event, uh, the atmosphere, pre-poll atmosphere was created um, in media and public. Uh, and uh, Imran Khan uh, barely could make the uh, the government with uh, alliance. Uh, the government was made, and there were too too many expe expectations. Uh, unfortunately, uh, now we are seeing in three years that those expectations uh, were hollow claims, and we are back to square one. We'll have to decide whether how to get rid of an IMF, how to have fair election in 2023 and how to calm the public anxiety uh, who is suffering uh, at the grassroots level because of the electricity shortage and all the amenities which are the prices are hiking um, on on daily basis so these are the challenges and yeah. on top of it we haven't seen any development in the last 3 years the metro or in strain or even the brp in peshawar has been the single um, uh, the achievement uh, and after that it has become the, the uh, episodes of past and this government, uh, mm. despite blaming everything on corruption or the past governments, couldn't come, um, come up with the, with, the, with the claims and promises. Now, uh, Mohammed Shafakat, let me give you a different question uh, to what uh, Amjad was asked. Imran Khan was the one who moved the case in the Supreme Court uh, after the Panama Papers. So that decision was always going to be political. It was about getting Nawaz Sharif out of office so that he could then be selected as a prime minister. What would you say? I think really the, the, uh, the Panama case uh, really was nothing to do with the Imran Khan or anybody else. It's an international set of journalists who did this case uh, uh, against uh, not just uh, Nawaz Sharif, but a variety of leaders from across the globe, the Putins and the King Salmans and everybody. So really... Obviously, as a nemesis, uh, as your rival, you're going to jump onto something that you've got 
uh, related to corruption because Imran Khan's business and, and, and slogan has always been uh, against corruption in Pakistan. And Amjad Malik Sahib, with due respect to him, that uh, they're saying well, nothing's happened for the last three years. Uh, but really, Pakistan is a, 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 on a course to uh, redefine itself. Pakistan was left in a lurch. Pakistan was left, left in mm. huge loans. Uh, so really, uh, corruption is, is the, the root cause of where Pakistan is today. Yeah, That's but Shif being on the... Uh, 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 sorry, sorry to interrupt you. I was just going to say, that case was actually submitted by Imran Khan uh, in the Supreme Court. And that's why... <laughs> Uh, that's why uh, uh, people say it was political. It was a way to get rid of his main competitor, who was um, Nawaz Sharif. But there was a case to be had. The Panama case was, was you know, world famous. It's, um, it's a global thing. So really, the, the point is, Pakistan is where it is today because of corruption, because of graft, because of money laundering. The richer got richer. The, 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 if you look at the ruling class, if you look at the Nawaz Sharif. 40 years ago in the Warren of the today, if you look at the Zardaris and the Bilabal houses and the Ravin palaces that they made, I'm sorry, but that's on the back of the taxpayers of Pakistan. Pakistan has become poor. Pakistan is a nuclear state. But despite that, one of the worst economies, we have to keep... Amjad Khan, uh, Amjad uh, Malik Sahib said that uh, we go to IMF. Who hasn't gone to IMF? And why are we going to IMF again and again? Because when, when Nawaz Sharif left, we only had six billion pounds okay. in the... In, and we have to go to Saudi but Arabia. There is, but there is a, no indication that the corruption is coming to an end. Yeah. We have seen the medicine minister resigning. We have it's seen your own general it's... secretary resigning. So we haven't seen it. Uh, uh, we have seen I, offshore, all, all I, other offshore companies, uh, which came in Panama Papers. There were 200-odd people who were mentioned in that Umar Chima's report. We haven't seen anybody else being touched by yeah. the uh, probe or investigation body by NAB. Uh, this and, political witch hunt hasn't taken us anywhere. Now the so, um, um, government let me ask you then. are not working. Let, um, Malik, let me ask you, because I want to take our viewers through a journey. Yeah, lot, yeah, yeah. Lots of, of our viewers um, won't, won't be as uh, interested uh, or energised by Pakistan politics than, than the three of us. But how, did, uh, how do you think the, your party, the PML Noon, act with, without having their leader? He was banned from office. He, he was taken off. Uh, when we come back, we'll continue the exclusive conversation and debate between the two of them. Join us on the other side of this on this very special day where we debate Pakistan. Salamu <music> Welcome back to Questions with me, Mohammed Shafiq, exclusively here on British Muslim TV uh, as Prime Minister, despite being elected by two thirds. A majority uh, in a landslide victory in 2013. He was then able to stand Shabik, from office. Yeah, Shafiq, um, it's a very relevant question. Um, how how did he operate? Uh, if, if you look at the history uh, from uh, Fatima Jannah or Liaquat Ali Khan to modern day, uh, going through the Bhutto's, uh, it was not an easy um, a journey. Uh, any democratic party, any democratic leader in Pakistan uh, had to struggle, had to fight uh, and and uh, it is not easy to fight for the democracy and civilian right completely. Pakistan is, is not Great Britain. And uh, uh, there is a, uh, a, a... You'll have to look at the holistic approach, the, the inherent problems between uh, civil and military uh, regimes, um, um, the young history of 70-odd years. Um, most of the time um, have been like three or four martial laws uh, by by the military and then around by 16, 17 prime ministers. Nobody could complete their tenure of five years. Uh, only few prime ministers who completed their tenure were uh, uh, the, the prime minister who were working under the shadow of uh, a military ruler mm -hmm. or military was uh, shadowing that prime minister. So we'll have, we'll have to keep in mind that any civilian leader who will talk about uh, civilian rule or respect for vote or fiscal discipline or uh, accountability of budget or defense mm. budget or talk about education or talk about internet media uh, progression going to public uh, like Shifakat Saab has mentioned talking about corruption uh, or, or, or bringing accountability to the core uh, departments so uh, it will not so be that, easy it, it so not we easy. are also facing the same problems uh, without Prime Minister uh, Nawaz Sharif who is deposed now and he is in Britain but still taking guidance uh, and his wisdom and from his experience, his younger brother 
Shabazz Sharif is uh, holding the rein as leader of the opposition and trying okay. his best to bridge the gap okay. between uh, there, there has okay. been a huge gap and and trust deficit. So he's trying his best to bring them all on okay. on one page and try to move forward so that we can have a fair election in 2023. Yeah. So, but your party did suffer by not having your leader being able of to, uh, to lead Of course, any party campaign. would suffer. Yeah. Any party would suffer if you take out his leader uh, without completing his tenure. And um, 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 I would like to mention that Panama was not the root cause of his ouster. He was ousted bec not because of any judgment of by the court of law, but because of not declaring okay. um, uh, 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 unemployment of his son. So let's go to you, Mami Shafakat. How, how do you assess that time, the political environment in which those elections and the campaign was about to begin? Even opposition, they don't admit that they know this line. And he's not corrupt and he's not corrupt about himself. Let's not talk about TPI, I'm talking about the individual. I don't know how tough it is for very high uh, in 2013. I was there in the election. Probably should have won the election as well and things didn't go his way. Then he, he was very patient. Uh, and then he bid his time. He, he resonates with the public. He resonates with the ordinary Pakistani when he talks about corruption, when he talks about how the rich are rich and how people uh, uh, have offshore accounts and, and have uh, uh, lifestyles in London and Dubai. And whenever something, something goes wrong, they, they, uh, they're on the next day out to Pakistan. I'm sorry, if you are a leader like Imran Khan, which I respect, that this is the reason I back this man, and I will back him till, uh, inshallah, that he's on the right path and he does no, no corruption. I will always back mm -hmm. him for the sole reason that he has given a dream to the people of Pakistan. He's took us back to the Qadi uh, vision, Ilama Akbar's dream, and he's promised this, that he will try to deliver. Yes, three years is, uh, of performance is not brilliant, but... You, you cannot fix something, especially, look, we're not talking about last 70 years. We want to say Pakistan has been in a mess 70 years. It's not really 70 years. It's last 40 years, since the 80s, when Nawaz Sharif, et cetera, came first time, and then Benzir, and then we've had martial laws. I'm not, I used to be thinking, oh, well, it doesn't matter if we shut up and these guys come into power. But now I'm a staunch uh, uh, supporter of a democratic process in Pakistan and no, uh, no military takeovers again, because that has damaged Pakistan. More than, I will agree with Amjad Malik Saab on this issue uh, because uh, we do not want any dictatorship ever again. But Imran Khan's popularity, Imran Khan's vision, Imran Khan's honesty, integrity was what started the campaign in 2018. And he, 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 that's what made him win the election as well. Because no doubt, no doubt, this man has awoken not just people from PTI, not from the world, and especially middle class in Pakistan. The middle class in Pakistan had no interest in politics in Pakistan, uh, but the, the people in living in the, the gated communities, they started voting and they came out to vote back this mm. Tabdili. And that's the reason because they want to change in Pakistan. People are fed up with the bureaucracy, fed up with the law, uh, law situation, uh, uh, and the Qabza groups and the mafias, the sugar, the every genie mafia, poultry mafia. Everybody's fed up, but one man cannot do it. As a nation, as a people, we have a responsibility. And we're not, that's the biggest problem mm. I've seen in Pakistan. I don't blame the leadership as much as the public because we are just defaulting uh, uh, anybody for uh, family and family. No, we're not, we, uh, it happens in India, the Gandhis. It happens in Pakistan, yeah. the Sharifs and the Putos, and in Bangladesh as well. Why? On one side, you're saying we're democracies. And then you are trying to uh, groom their children to rule over us. I'm sorry. My generation will not accept that. Okay, so thinking back to that campaign, uh, Amjad, uh, 2018, who did you think was going to win that election? Well, I think there was indications that we, uh, our leadership was hunted down. Um, a lot of our uh, contenders or candidates were um, uh, nervous following them. And then um, right near the election, uh, you've seen the Prime Minister Nawashri at that time went back and with, with his daughter, uh, but they were arrested and... They were tried, but still, because they had an um, experienced team, they had idea, they had a slogan, Bayaniya, which is called, uh, and they had some results uh, of their uh, um, five-year government. Um, they finished electricity 
brought the projects and kept the amenities, uh, the sugar, wheat prices low. So they thought that even if the fair chance is given to the public and they may come up uh, with with the uh, 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 the formula to run or form the government, but uh, um, uh, with the the witch hunt they faced, um, there was no clear majority and. We saw the people who came to secure the ballot box. They secured it. They secured it properly um, and made sure that uh, no um, election commission could uh, give a proper relief to the candidates at that time. And we saw that even the counting, recounting, and appeals were uh, months uh, uh, for for the candidates to have any decision. And by that time, uh, the government was formed. So. I would say the mm. distrust which developed uh, with the Panama case and JIT and the hearing, it lingered on um, and that went to uh, an advantage to the selected regime they built and uh, the government was formed with an alliance uh, with a very thin majority. Mm. Um, with the hurry they made the government, uh, the results are quite obvious. We are seeing on the foreign front, we are waiting and begging for Joe Biden to call the Prime Minister Imran Khan, we are seeing that uh, Narendra Modi, tomorrow is the anniversary, 5th of August. They, mm. on Kashmir, had a solo flight. Um, on okay. economy, uh, we are seeing the deterioration. Yeah. Uh, so uh, all these are in front of us. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about foreign policy in, in one of the segments that we talk about. Uh, just before I come back to you, uh, Shafak, let's take a call. If you want to join the discussion, 01924231083 is our number. And to all of those... Watching on Facebook Live, uh, a very warm welcome. Let's go to the lines. Let's go to line one. Salaamu Alaikum. You're live on British Muslim TV. Hello, caller. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. Walaikum Assalam. What do you like to say, sir? My name is Mohammed Nazir, calling from Sheffield. I have a question for both uh, honourable panel guests. Yep. Uh, my question is, how many prosecutions have been completed by the NAB, by the sitting party or the allies? Because I know the... Absorb our accountability in Pakistan is only has been seen and observed against the opposition party. Not a single case has been successfully completed against any member of the sitting government or coalition uh, partner. And my second question is what this government has done on the Kashmir issue because when the Honorable Prime Minister Imran Khan has attended the uh, American president, he said, We have accepted his arbitration. But what is the result of that arbitration? So this is my question. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Two questions and one about NAB prosecutions um, and then the, the issue of Kashmir. We'll come up to Kashmir in a, in a second because it's part of one of our segments. But Mohammed Shafak, let's take that NAB prosecutions, that there was a selection. The establishment didn't want Mir Nawaz Sharif. They wanted Imran Khan and therefore he became prime minister. And we've not seen any prosecutions. Uh, of government ministers and those others like J Jangir Tahreen, who's been accused, uh, your supporter um, and party member, who's been accused of corruption. Nazir Saab, there's not been many prosecutions, especially of the uh, uh, the prosecution, you've got uh, Nazir Saab, if I'm right, that's Nazir Saab from Sheffield, he's a, he's a solicitor lawyer and I'm doing Malik Saab, this is their field, so I'm going to uncharted territory for somebody like me who's a media person. <laughs> but what I need to say, you do need uh, witnesses. You need witnesses to prosecute them. When people do not come forward, when people do not give evidence uh, in the court of uh, uh, law, then, then it's very difficult. They, 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 what about these Fuluta uh, Wallas? What about these Redi Wallas? Uh, millions of P, uh, uh, money is coming into them. Can I give you an example? I mean, Mahmoud Shafak, can I give you an example? Today, Today, NAB, which is the National Accountability Bureau, which investigates corruption and allegations against people in Pakistan, they've launched another inquiry into um, Shabazz Sharif, who is the PML president, he's the leader of the opposition uh, in the National Assembly, about illegal transfer of state land in Bahawalpur. But we see this on a daily basis. We see opposition politicians who are accused of corruption, yet government ministers who don't have um, um, any investigations into them. So it just seems to be a bit of a biased nab here. Would you agree? I agree with you. Justice has to be seen to be done. As uh, uh, we all should speak up for justice, it's not about Jangir Tin or Nawaz Sharif, and justice, justice. It should be fair across the board. 
It doesn't matter who they are. Pakistan needs justice. This is the this is the root cause of Pakistan's problem today because we selective justice and justice denied is justice delayed. We need all of us. The problem with parties, members of each party, no legal PTI or People Party. We always speak against the opposition or the government, but we never say, okay, let's do it across the board. The, the Jangir Trin has got serious accusations against him. So has Nawaz Sharif, so has the Sharif family. They need to go back to Pakistan. So Nawaz Sharif should not be sitting in the UK. The so-called lion of Pakistan should be, he came here for four weeks for medical treatment, hardly seen him in a hospital. He needs to go back to Pakistan. He's ex-Prime Minister of Pakistan. We'll take a very quick break. We'll continue the discussions and we'll also take your calls. Join us on the other side of these very important messages. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Questions with me, Mohammed Shafiq, exclusively here on British Muslim TV. We're talking about Pakistan. And that's the only way. He went to Pakistan, I understand. I respect that. And Mariam and the God of the If I may said, answer the yeah. question, Shafiq. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the accusation against I, your party. Uh, I, I, uh, I let, think let me, we're deviating let me, from. Let, let me ask question. you. Yeah, but let, has, let me just ask you the question uh, as well, very simply, yeah. sir. Is that yeah. your party, you have a, a leader who is under corruption allegations. You have a former leader who is a prime minister who was convicted in the Supreme Court of not declaring um, a business interest. Clearly, your party needs to move on from this corruption allegations. Yeah, well, I think the question was that why there hasn't been a successful prosecution. Uh, I answered the, the first bit and then come to your point. I personally think three years were enough if they wanted to do some kind of... Um, uh, accountability, fair accountability, where uh, people who have plundered the public funds uh, are held to account, uh, trials are fair, and within six months those, tried, those trials are completed yeah. and people are sentenced, and then there is no political bias and then you no political vision. We are here, there is no CPS-style prosecution, they haven't made that. I mean, you were talking about that sense that there's a victimization going on here, whether it's the People's Party, whether it's Mullah Fazal Rahman, whether it's the your party, uh, that NAB, the National Accountability Bureau, are deliberately targeting key figures in your party to take them out because they're threatened by them uh, because of their political experience uh, and stature. Without putting charge, they were keep keeping accused for longer, months and months in custody, uh, mostly uh, those who were from opposition parties. They ended prematurely the investigation in Malam Jabba reference, where the names of defense minister and the secretary to the prime minister emerged. And also, uh, there was a brigadier who died, committed suicide, uh, <coughs> and, and left a suicide note. Uh, Supreme Court twice in major bail applications criticized uh, the tactics used by NAB. So we can't really have fair accountability when NAB is becoming an executive tool and uh, ministers are parading and naming and shaming the political opponents. And uh, next day, NAB, NAB is inviting them in for investigations and keeping them under the radar, uh, giving carte blanche to the government ministers. Coming back to your point, Nawaz Sharif, uh, Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, he came with the permission of the courts and the government after they formed a commission that his uh, health was deteriorating in the uh, Punjab prisons. I personally think at that time, they were not able to afford Prime Minister getting popularity in the Punjab prisons. So they technically, it was a quid pro quo that they let him go out uh, for his medical treatment. And they rather that he stays in London out of their uh, way mm. so that they can achieve some mileage or uh, 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 political achievements. Uh, I'm afraid they couldn't make use of those three years. As we are coming nearer to the uh, next elections, uh, two years down the line. Yeah. Now they are again uh, using the same rhetoric. Now the election will be on the performance. Performance from three, 2013 to 2018 of PMLN government, mm. prior to that PPP government and the current government. Yeah. And you'll have to prove that uh, which government was effective and okay. uh, what they have, the effects on the public life. And, they, and they, you can't really have five-year government and then keep running on it and saying, oh, the government behind, be, before us were corrupt. And that is why we couldn't achieve those targets on foreign policy, on economy, on administration, okay. on defense and on amenities and um, the co common public's life. 
Okay. So I would say that the next election will be on performance. Okay, Mami Shafaka, let me ask you this. The irony is that Imran Khan uh, stood as a change candidate. He was changed against the, the big two parties, the People's Party and the uh, PMLN. But the reality is when he became prime minister, the people that he's sitting in parliament with are rejects from the other two parties. They run away from other parties, what we call in Urdu, Lote Wale, or uh, parties. Um, so it, it was the establishment, it was the same people who were under Musharraf's time, now in office again, uh, sitting with Imran Khan. And that's not change, is it? Uh, uh, look, the, the, this, is a, this is a problem. Pakistan, the, the, the establishment is, is the king. So nobody can deny that they have a huge role in Pakistan. They've had it for, for years. Today, when Nawaz Sharif and Noon League people talk about the establishment as a, a, a pariah, I'm sorry, but they are the creation of the establishment. They are the creation of General Jelani and General Ziaullah. And today, they are becoming the champions of democracy. They talk about Borko Izzat, though. They don't have democracy in their own party, I'm afraid. A lot of these parties don't see it that way. The point is that, look, Pakistan needs a sea change. How are we going to change that? We need to stop creating monsters. You can blame all these people coming, the electables, the so-called electables that came into PTI. That's fair enough. Because the rich ruling elite, if you go across any my area from Kohota, these the same faces have been ruling for four, my lifetime. I mean, it's the same faces, now we're seeing their children. A few changes here and there. Why is it that we're not getting out of that crap? Because the public, me, you, and your blocks, we are the problem. We are tribalistic people. Are we really democratic? Do we look at things through democracy, or do we see it through clans, through family, through peer pressure? That's how we. That's how our democracy is running. Until that mm. changes, we will keep having these so-called electables who jump from one party, People Party, to uh, No League, No League to PTI. Now a lot of these people definitely are right. I agree with you. They're from Musharraf regime, but why? Because we're allowing that. We're allowing that. What can one man in Iran Khan do alone when everybody was okay? And why is Pakistan Muslim League known? Muhammad Zubair Saab, he having secret meetings with General Bajwa Saab. When, when Pakistan Muslim League won in 2013, that was okay. That was democracy. That was a fair election. But when they lost in 2018, it's rigged. He's yeah. a selected. Then even the Imran Khan do a speech on his first day, and they've been calling him selected from day one. Look, this is not the way forward. I agree with Amjad Malik Saab that Shabash Sharif Saab, who's the most senior and I think most sensible leader in the Pakistan Muslim League, he's trying his best to calm things down to work with the establishment, to work across the board with the opposition, but yeah. Nawaz Sharif, Zid, and Maryam, I'm sorry to say, I have to say this on record, Maryam, because she's naive, she's not a astute politician, she is damaging Pakistan Muslim League more than anybody, more than even PTO. So really, no, the, the fact is, we're all same in this uh, situation. Nobody can do this about Musharraf's people because they are secretly meeting them, and then they, they're calling okay, them so, selected. Uh, they're the original selected. Um, Jamalik, address that point about the division in your party now, what seems between Shabazz Sharif and Nawaz Sharif. Shabazz Sharif wanting to work with the establishment to try to get some sort of positive relationship and Nawaz Sharif calling out the corruption and alleged treatment uh, he suffered at the hands of this so-called establishment. I, I think there are always a difference of opinion in any party. Um, there could be a different line of action adopted but in the end, the party leadership decide in consultation with all the seniors. Uh, I don't see any division when they sit down on a table. They agree to disagree, but come to, after consultation, a decision, which is followed in letter and spirit by all. Um, I don't think Shafakat has a room to say that who is good and who is bad in PMLN, but he can opine on uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan or his team. Uh, there has been rifts in their party. Jahangir Trin has been sacked and... Other people have been coming and going from Keani to uh, Zulfi Bukhari. So people have, all parties have these uh, issues. But in PMLN, I think the letter and spirit, uh, uh, in letter and spirit, uh, the decision are followed of leadership. Uh, Shabazz Sharif Saab has a different, different route uh, to achieve and reach to the government. Whereas uh, Mariam Nawaz Sharif follows uh, the, the popular, the, the, the crowd, um, popularity, um, uh, where the public sentiments are are um, engaged and public is happy to engage with her, uh, whereas the senior leadership want 
uh, whilst that we want to enrage the public and uh, their enthusiasm is uh, uh, enlightened for mm. coming election but they also seriously think how to uh, the how to make up the wedge which has already been created how to uh, uh, curtail their distrust and when it comes to caretaker setup uh, the establishment shouldn't be sitting or, or or siding with the ruling party they should come in the in middle uh, the elect the, but, the sorry, election I, are held I, i'm just can i just ask you sorry to drop but who is the establishment nobody's been able to define to me who the establishment are everybody talks about the establishment well well who are well, they tell uh, us uh, coming 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 back for pakistan coming back to pakistan establishment we will say new in any country the establishment would be the state institutions um intelligence agencies judiciary police uh, bureaucracy some journalists senior journalists some uh, senior minds who can play their role to give advice and opinion some foreign secretaries some bureaucrats who are very experienced and have dealt with number of years the government business so they form an establishment but here we have because dichotomy is there that 30 to 40 years uh, military regime has created a kind of establishment where there sometimes sway and sometimes they remain neutral uh, in this uh, position we would like in future that establishment of mm. pakistan uh, remain aloof and neutral uh, when it comes to 2023 okay. election okay, so uh, and like they made a, a south punjab slogan and they joined a new electable uh, tareen group or any other group and then any go- any gov- any electable or any government who can form a, a majority government that these groups are joined with them so that like whether they are from from musharraf side so, or ppp side yeah, so but, we want that they uh, neutralize themselves okay uh, I, i want to ask step back okay. and then we can have a fair election yeah so i want to ask you um, uh, um mohammed shafaqat in 2013 your party alleged corruption rigging yet you accepted the result in 2020 what changed between 2013 and 2020 for you to accept the same system that you allege was corrupt and rigging the election against you was now rigging the system for you and you accepted that fair point but the, well, this this is the problem the day the political elite the political parties sit together around to say um with malik saab made some valid points i agree with that that the day the political parties sit together say enough is enough and establishment stays at the back seat and say listen stay aloof from the elections only then but if you can have secret meetings with them if you can meet them behind closed doors and say please you know find a way out for nawashi to leave pakistan and go to uk he did a deal in time of musharraf and deny that for 10 years so now he's done a deal this way and it's on record that you know he was helped No, no, but it's a typical politi- politician. Shafiq, you're not. Shafiq. You're not. You're not a politician. Shafiq, I, I, if you, I, I must, if I let me just ask you this. Let me just ask you this, Mr. Rakat. Interestingly, both both of you. In let, me, let me say to both of you. They asked for a probe. Let me say to both of you, gentlemen. Uh, both of you are giving me politician answers. Both of you are giving me an answer which is basically rather than looking at your own parties, you're attacking the other parties. I'm asking you, if the system was corrupt in 2013. Why did you okay. accept the result in 2020? We'll carry on this very interesting debate on Pakistan. Join us on the other side of these very important messages. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Questions with me, Mohamed Shafiq, live here from Wakefield, wherever you are around the world. A very warm welcome. If you're just tuning in, we're talking about Pakistan as Pakistan reflects on the third anniversary um, since Imran Khan became prime minister. Three years he's going to be uh, as prime minister later on uh, in August. Because at the moment, nobody's really got a choice. Nobody's really got a choice. What, how Shafiq, do you, because Shafiq of, in 2013, yeah. they allege corruption. and then malfeasance in election we offered him we offered them commission supreme yeah. court under the chief But justice could, held a commission i'm just malik i could ask you rigging charges i'm just malik i could ask you the same question you have on us i'm just malik yeah. i could ask you uh, sorry shafaqat i could ask i'm just malik the same question 2013 you won with a, a huge landslide you accepted the result in 2013 yeah 2018 you then alleged corruption 
in 2013 they alleged corruption they uh, the famous quote of 35 punctures came from imran khan side we sat with them set, settle the terms and had a commission headed by nasrul mulk saab chief justice of pakistan it was held by supreme court that there was no rigging now uh, mahamish fakat dr tal qadi was a guest of my program uh, last year and at least he was consistent he said the system stank and there was poor rigging going on and he therefore didn't partake in those elections in 2013 2018 either but your party alleged corruption poor rigging then when you won in 2020 you accepted that so you're no different from uh, pmln or ppl people's party look there's there's two ways to look at this i agree with dr tarul qadri who when he said uh, which is very point that the state is always bigger than the leaders what we've created is we our leaders and their personalities are bigger than the state of pakistan that is the problem this is an issue i have close to my heart that we need to change this perception that we need to put pakistan first and the leadership come and go and he was right that the tarik qadri is right that corruption is uh, corrupt uh, the system is corrupt to the core but look there's one way either how do you do you can, revolution who's going to bring that revolution are we a revolutionary call are we are we are we got that knowledge to do that mm. i don't think so we're not doing revolutions you know because we've seen that in our dharma in our conduct uh, you know the things could lead to anarchy and civil war so which is the best way to fix this democracy step by step the only way is going to be done the blame game needs to stop the leaders need to sit around yeah. the table okay say, okay enough is enough you need mm. to fix this because no if if we if pakistan was to leak come into power tomorrow the nab cases will maybe start against imran khan and the likes and who created nab was uh, the, the likes of musharraf and wasif and who selected the chairman the people party in wasif and today nab is bad because they who who was who persecuted yeah. zardari who put him into prison for 11 years it was yeah. the same the wasif was there for a month so you know what this is the problem you know what happens uh, uh, the chickens have come home to roost your past will always catch up with you I yeah okay so let me let, let, let me the way the truth works out Okay. As a commodity. Okay. Not Let to people, not to these families. Okay, gentlemen, if we can keep your questions briefer, we'll get through more of the questions, please. Amjad Malik, so instead of accepting the result, your party and the others try to stop the new prime minister Imran Khan address Pakistan National Assembly. You heckled him. There was lots of swearing going on in 2018. Are you ashamed of that behavior of your fellow parliamentarians? I think uh, first of all the investigations it should continue anybody who alleges uh, should be thoroughly investigated whether it's pti or people's party or ppmln election commission should be armed and strengthened uh, we learned lessons from 2013 and the commission's findings brought in the election reforms and rts system you saw in 2018 rts system was gone 60 62 63 billion rupees investment was gone within a day and we return to the manual submission of the rts results uh, but it should be con- it should be continuing exercise at each time it should be election commission should make a finding and and do uh, like you said the ethics of it uh, each prime minister should be uh, allowed to talk to uh, its uh, uh, the audience in the in the parliament there is no doubt about it uh, same as the shadow cabinet the leader of the opposition Uh, when you put half of the le- opposition in jails even after winning election production orders are not coming then opposition has is left with no other choice but to but to agitate and protest but i do understand that the uh, the government ministers a government leader of the uh, of the uh, ruling party should be yeah. allowed to speak and the decorum should be maintained uh, but i think we will learn with the passage of time Okay, we all um, will learn. I, I, I'm going to ask you two very similar questions, but let's go to you first, from Jim Malik. Uh, when you look at that government of 2013 to 2018, what did uh, the Nawaz Sharif and Shahid Abbas uh, Kakani, um, his government, uh, Abbasi Sab's government as well, what did they achieve in those five years? I think if you if you can count on fingers, um, we ended electricity. Uh, brought in major developments uh, cpac was brought in as a game changer gdp growth was maintained like 5.8 was higher dollar rate was maintained um, amenities were very low for example wheat and 
sugar prices, eggs, I mean, uh, tomatoes and wheat was 33, eggs were 99, sugar was 55, which is now 115. Um, the overall overseas Pakistanis, uh, there were several, like OPC Punjab was made, OPF was reformed, advisory councils were formed, people were taken in the parliament, there was a talk of five seats in the parliament. Uh, AJK, OPC was formed, uh, there was a talk of OPC in uh, capital, so that the uh, uh, representation, adjudication, grievances of overseas Pakistanis are handled, and they are given seats in the parliament. Um, and, and overall, the, the fiscal discipline was maintained uh, and uh, Christ Christianity and accountability uh, was, was okay. with the such that the tolerance was maintained. So the opposition was not uh, hurled and uh, put through NAB the way they faced after 2018 election. So I think there were a lot of achievements. Okay. And, 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 and you saw that Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif could go easily to Saudi Arabia and and CPAC uh, on China was coming up with a huge contribution. And similarly, uh, uh, maintaining relation with the United States. So I think on all fronts, um, uh, the, the decorum was maintained. Okay. So, um, Mohammed Shafak, you've heard what um, Amjad has said about Nawaz Sharif's uh, record in government. How do you assess that period of 2013 to 2018? I think, okay, one thing they did, uh, credit goes to the, uh, the, the the military and the government, that the terrorism and the law and order uh, situation, especially in Karachi, improved, give credit where it's due. Yes, they've done a lot of development, but a lot of it was fake economy. I'm telling you, the, the depreciation of uh, 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 prices, I mean, it was like subsidies. Everything was subsidized. Now we're living in the real economy. That's the problem. You know, everything was looking very, it was all plastered over, looked very good. But when they left, why were we, we, we such a mess? If they was that good, then people first would have wanted them out. And secondly, we would have been left with something in the account. We are six billion left in the account. We have to run to the Saudis, the UAE, and, and China to borrow money, then the IMF. Why? If the Pakistan Muslim League were doing that well, I'm sorry. Uh, and then why was the finance minister uh, left the country before the uh, uh, election took uh, place? And on top of that, CPAC has got nothing to do with Pakistan Muslim League. Let's get this clear. CPAC is a, a very old uh, uh, project. It's been in the pipeline since the time of General Musharraf. Uh, he gave this port water to um, Singapore uh, Port Authority, and then he gave you. Uh, then now it's been handed over to China, which is good. Uh, but the thing is, let's not claim CPAC. CPAC is an ongoing project. Okay. It will continue with PTI there. No need for any okay. major project. So then, uh, and, and let me let me then ask you. Listen, you know, the thing is, we, we, we show, we're selling a good thing, yeah, it looks very good. But then again, all the prices were kept down and the, pre, and the amount of surplus, current account surplus we had, was in billions. But, but okay, so let, 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 let me switch. Uh, uh, sorry, Shafakat, let me switch that question then to you, Shafakat, to start with, and then Amjad can respond. Um, what's the record of Imran Khan over the last three years? What things do you think he's achieved in office? I'll tell you one thing he's achieved. Look, Right now, throughout the world, there's a major climate problem. Yes or no? China, Pakistan, the Germany, floods everywhere. Now, the 20 billion tree uh, tsunami, great project. People don't appreciate These are long-term projects. Two, dam, two to three dams have been built. Where was the dam in the time of Noah Sharif? Very important. Pakistan is becoming a water-scarce country by 2025. On top of that, the, uh, the safeguard, the health cards in KPK, now launched in, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, in Punjab. There's a, uh, the uh, uh, police reforms are the only problem which I've seen that they've not improved and they need to improve. They keep changing the IG. In, in, in KPK, that was something was so popular. May Allah rest his soul. Duranita, who's passed away, did a revolution in KPK. And on back of that, that's why PTI did so well in KPK. The point is we need to move towards a proper governance. There are a lot of positive things. Only thing these people talk about is that, oh, Imran Khan is sold Kashmir, he's done this, is that. What the, and I, uh, let me ask you, Mabjid Malik Sahib, who was uh, 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 the foreign minister of uh, Pakistan Muslim League between 2000 and 2018? You didn't even have one. Look at Pakistan. Absolutely not. Imran Khan is on fire on international level. He's talking to the Americans that you should talk to them. He, he, he told the okay. CIA, you know, have to have in Pakistan. He, he, he's told other countries to back off. Listen, we've got proxies in Pakistan trying to damage Pakistan. 
try to damage the Kashmir cause that in Afghanistan got issue. We so, Mohammed Shivaka, can I go? We've got about 30 seconds before the break. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. I, let, do you recognize, do you, I know, do, do you recognize this quote, Mohammed Shafakat? I would prefer to die rather than beg for loans. Do you know who said that? Yeah, Imran Khan. And guess what he did next when he became a prime minister? He went to beg for IMF loans. Shouldn't, no, is, isn't, isn't, isn't the accusation from the opposition that Mr. Imran Khan is Mr. U turn? When you come into when you take over the government, they thought this is the situation, this is in our coffers, this is the amount of money we're using. When they realized how the dire the situation was, they had to they, before IMF they went to the friendly brotherly countries like UAE, Saudi Arabia mm. and China for help. Listen, nobody Imran Khan said that was the most difficult time for me. Nobody like Imran Khan, uh, who's a very proud man, would go out begging for Pakistan. And he's doing for Pakistan. Then, that, that, what about the previous IMF? Where is all that money gone? Yeah. Where is when Pakistan did the nuclear test in 1998 and Monk Savaro, I went to Manchester when Nawaz Sharif came here. We all contributed. Where did that money go? Till this day, nobody knows. Okay. They built the flag. So let me ask you, Amjad Malik, let me ask you, let me ask you a similar question. Under your party's leadership, uh, you left during the 2013-18 government, Pakistan economy with over 40 billion pound loans. Isn't it a bit rich for you and your party now to accuse Imran Khan, um, who has inherited this mess, where it's your mess and uh, Zadari and uh, Gilani Shah Sahib's, uh mess? We'll talk more about Nawaz Sharif and we'll talk about Imran Khan and we'll talk about uh, some of the issues as well. Welcome back. Time is flying when you're having fun, particularly when you have Amjad Malik and uh, Mohammed Shifakat here. Uh, I personally think that um, Imran Khan had no vision. He had no team. He came in hurry. Uh, now, like a bad workman, quarrels with his tools, is blaming everything on uh, previous two regimes. I personally think he should have come up and deliver. We never saw 50 lakh houses. We didn't saw millions of jobs. We didn't saw the billion of trees. Uh, he wanted to turn Prime mm -hmm. Minister House as a charity that people could like uh, do something uh, uh, of educational. Uh, now they are uh, doing it as well, for a well, well, What about the 40 billion pound loans that your party is doing? He couldn't ride the motorcycle or motorbike like he claimed that like a Holland prime minister. That 40 billion pound that your party over that five year period borrowed on the international market. But, Why but don't I, you want I to talk about that? No, well, we do talk about it. And uh, if you look at it, we borrowed money from international uh, institutes and by we, we put on development as well. So you saw Orange Train, Metro, um, even in Multan, Lahore and others. Uh, uh, and the government of uh, Imran Khan couldn't achieve those milestones. Even I was reading today, government debt in Pakistan increased to 37997.70 uh, uh, billion in May only. Uh, so we they they have uh, taken loan more than what we could take in five years. Uh, initial three years they have incurred more loan, uh, and when it, when we look at the comparatively the projects they have completed, or um, um, the the project they introduced, uh, there is none apart from the BRT which was introduced in the last regime of KPK government. Uh, any major. Uh, 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 projects or any major planning and this, they are all blaming on, um, on on the previous governments. And even CPAC, you have seen recently the resignation of General Asim Bajwa. Uh, so if your uh, stalwarts are resigning from here, your medicine minister resigning, your overseas minister resigning, a mother of the party is generous acti of any party, Jahangiri Tareen had to resign uh, on these allegations. And I personally think when comparatively uh, when you look at uh, the achievements, um, the PTI government's record is very hollow and they will struggle if there is a fair fight and you go to polls in 2023 uh, on achievement, performance, team and their slogans and claims in the first uh, speech of Prime Minister Imran Khan and also in his manifesto. 
you know the south punjab province was never made yeah. uh, he joined those group and uh, the electables on that promise that will he'll make that province in punjab never made all those all those claims and promises turn out to be all like you said earlier you turn uh, they couldn't uh, um, uh, deliver those promises they made in order to form the government uh, they couldn't deliver on it so so what are the things which under uh, mohammed shafaqat um, mohammed uh, sorry amjad malik has said in, from July 2018, which is just as your party was coming uh, into office, to March this year, you've already borrowed £33 billion, according to the International uh, Monetary Fund. So you're already at 78% and you're only in year three. I agree. But then the, back to the basics again. Why are we borrowing the money? To pay the, the mess that these previous governments have left? I don't understand why... There's a saying, you can fool some of the people some of the time, most of the people, most of them, but not all of the people all of the time. Look, this, you know, this thing, if that... Shafaka, that's, that's, that's not, that's not the accused. That's not, that's not the, uh, uh, the answer. We were also clearing the people's party's debt. We were paying the interest of the people's party come government. What I want to say is that they would not wanted to speak with, with uh, such good numbers and child court, they want to buy election as well. So PTI is, uh, Imran Khan now, Three years, yes, they were turbulence, but now they're yeah. spreading the ship. They're doing well on international politics. But you're already, at, but you're already at thirty-three billion, which is seven billion uh, less than Nawaz Sharif did over five years. You will probably hit that. You will probably hit that in the next couple of months. Yeah, I agree. But you know how much we paid back in the first year? Nearly nine billion of, of the previous government's asset. Nine. Nobody talks about the what we paid back. And look at the current uh, account uh, surplus. We brought it down to zero. Mm. Look at the debt they left. In the, the but you didn't to... offer any subsidy. You, uh, the no, prices no. and the farmers and all the uh, the industrialists. You didn't offer any subsidy. But the prices are record high. Even after borrowing that much money, even the prices are low and GDP is still not the, up to the mark. And the dollar, dollar me, I was looking at today before coming to this program, is 164. The pound is around about 220. So if you are borrowing that much money, throw it on the public so that at least you can... The fact to answer that is that, okay, the, the pound is 200 pounds. And you know the remittance have gone up from 20 billion a year to 29 billion. Exports are record high. Stimmed sales, 70%. Yeah, that, imports... That is, that is, that is Italy, very good of uh, overseas Pakistan is helping you guys. Yeah. But when... But, Pakistan... Pakistan is going to rise whether we like it or not. Pakistan got huge challenges. Pakistan was left Definitely in a mess. Pakistan will rise. Yeah. Imran Khan has not visited UK once and his children will live here for, for three years. Okay, Imran, so let me... Uh, what is all this about? They, they want to rule Pakistan and their children want to rule over us, but they want to live in Dubai and London? No, sir. Nawaz Sharif needs to go back to Pakistan. So, yeah, well, the, I think that's a... Mohammed Shafaka, that's a really relevant question. Amjid Malik... Then we what talk. do you... Then we'll okay. Let we me ask... We know who damaged Pakistan. We know the story. Uh, 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 we know, let, we let, know about the past. You okay. will go to Pakistan, but you will not afford him. Okay. So, what, what do you... Uh, Amjad Malik, what, what, do you, what do you make of uh, your leader, Nawaz Sharif, who is a convicted criminal, according to the Pakistan Supreme Court? He came to the UK for medical treatment. He's still a convicted criminal. He's wandering around the streets of London and living his high life whilst people are suffering back home. Are you embarrassed by this, Mr. Malik? Shafiq, I, first, of, first of all, he's not convicted by Supreme Court. Um, he, NAB Court, um, um, sentenced him, and his appeal is pending before Islamabad High Court. Uh, initially, bail was granted. When the bail is granted, it means that there is a prime of SI, the leave was granted, notices were given. So it means that there is a prime of SI case of appeal, uh, and which uh, on the bail, it means that there are merits of it. So when it comes to the full hearing, I hope that the justice will be met. Uh, he came here with the permission of the court after the government set up a commission uh, and and uh, uh, found that uh, it will be best for his treatment yeah. if he goes abroad. Now, after coming here, going back is his decision and his doctor's decision. Uh, I uh, per personally think he will go back. Um, and And when he goes back is his decision. And in, uh, you know that in politics that these decisions are made very mm. calculatedly. And I think before it's, it's a, it's uh, next been... election, 
I'm just going to say it's been... Next election, we can expect... Uh, okay, and, it, and it's been really difficult for him. You know, let's take the politics out of this. He lost his wife. He wasn't able to yeah. go to Pakistan. He recently... It's, it's just that he lost his, his life in he's prison. Lost, I'm just saying he lost... It would have been left. a huge embarrassment for all of them. Yeah, and he lost uh, his mom. His he's, life in Punjab prison, it, it would have been embarrassing. No, no, I'm just uh, talking about... I'm talking, I'm talking about the human impact. He lost his wife, uh, who died here in the UK. He lost his mother as well, who also died yeah. in the UK and wasn't able to go back uh, for them. That can take quite a yeah. toll. Why doesn't he just... He seems all right. He looks perfectly fine. He's always giving out interviews to journalists outside his house. And he's always um, attending Zoom meetings. And uh, why doesn't he just go back? Like, like, like I said, that these are, uh, these are the decisions going to be made by him when he will return. Uh, the government has tried to... Uh, force him to return. Uh, but I personally think that it, this is a decision he will make. The government was not successful. Uh, their interior and NAB minister tried his level best, uh, but the government of uh, Britain was not minded to grant or accede to his uh, proposal or suggestions. Uh, Britain is a free country and they support democracy and, uh, and freedom and free press. And, uh, uh, and normally they, they do not become party. Uh, to these kind of uh, political witch hunt mm. or if there are fear of any persecution or repercussion of sending him back. So I, I personally think this is a decision he will make, um, hopefully, nearer the election time. Uh, and definitely he will go back to okay. Pakistan. Um, I want to move on and talk about the Azad Kashmir elections. We saw today a new Prime Minister, Sadar Abdul Qayyum Niazi, um, who is from the border uh, with Jammu, uh, being elected as the Prime Minister today in the Assembly. Uh, that was, I think, uh, 33 votes he got. Uh, historic moment for him. Um, Mohamed Shafaka, what do you make of uh, the election campaign in Azad Jammu Kashmir? You're from there, I'm from there. Um, and uh, how much impact will this new face, Sadar Abdul Qayyum, have on the government in Pakistan? Uh, sorry, in Azad Kashmir. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's been a very hostile campaign. And let me just uh, say that I, I'm not from Azad Kashmir. I'm from Kohota, Rawalpindi uh, uh, side. Uh, but still, I've got a lot of friends there. A lot of uh, my friends are from Azad. But your heart's in your heart's in Kashmir. We know that. Always, always, and uh, uh, inshallah, I'll become more Kashmir soon when my son gets engaged soon. Mashallah. Uh, but the thing, the point is that you know the campaign was very, very uh, uh, hostile, and I, 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 I wasn't happy with the conduct of Abin Gandapur from PTI, Maryam, and others who went to Kashmir and and. Uh, already a very hostile atmosphere because it's very, very high clan-based kind of politics in Azad Kashmir. And, and they very, very that kind of conduct. We need to all calm down, cool down, and start talking about the true democracy. We talk about democracy, but there is no real democracy in us. Otherwise, this man who's come forward now, a lot of people think that Sultan Mahmoud is very popular. A lot of his followers are very upset today. But I, I don't know this Sardar Qub uh, uh, Saab, uh, but he, yeah. his name is Alias Niazi. He's not really a Niazi. I heard he's a Sardar. But anyway, yeah, uh, there was a there was, there was a good story about that. I was just going to say there was a good story about that. Learning. Um, Sardar Abdul Qayyum, who was a former Prime Minister uh, of Azad Kashmir, they both had the same name, and the local yeah. authority civil servants were very. Uh, reluctant to, they were just uh, confusing between the two. So he added Niazi to distinguish between the two. But anyway, uh, let's take a caller. If you want to join us on the discussion, 01 924 83 And that caller just dropped. Sorry, my friend. Uh, I just didn't, didn't want to interrupt our guest. Um, so let me ask you then, Amjad Malik, uh, in the elections in 2016 in Izzah Jammu Kashmir, you stored uh, an historic 33 seats. Yet this year you went down to six. What went wrong apart from poll rigging? But if you look at it, five lakhs uh, vote and six seats, and government uh, got six lakh vote and 26 seats. Uh, but like I said, I, I wouldn't give uh, um, any, any benefit. I would say that there was a campaign, a uh, very um, uh, enthusiastic campaign, where Mariam Nawashri single-handedly uh, went and um, um, addressed the um, uh, audience, uh, made a mark. We'll take a very quick break. We'll continue the discussions and we'll also take your calls. Join us on the other side of these very important messages.
Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Questions with me, Mohammed Shafiq, exclusively here on British Muslim TV. Uh, made a political point that uh, PMLN, despite all the, uh, the treatment bestowed to them uh, and their leadership, still is popular. Um, and the government turnouts were not that convincing. But still, there is normally, uh, when there is a federal government uh, of a party, normally they, they make government in Azad Kashmir. So that trend followed. Uh, Shafakat said that we should calm down and have a, a sit sit back and relax. I, I don't think there has been any major incident uh, of that sort. There has been a political campaign. Uh, which I think we should all welcome. But there was a, kind of a there was, campaign in, there, well, there was, in other parts. When in you said there was nothing. There was two PTI workers that were Abdul shot Kayyum dead. Niazi also has a background. Yeah. His nephew, I think, is in army or something. Yeah, yeah. So there no, are, I, there I'm, are just, I'm, just, I'm just saying, you're saying there's, you know, there has been two, uh, two PTI workers who got shot uh, on election day uh, allegations yeah, see, uh, around that as well. Unfortunate incidents do happen. Uh, when major general elections are happen, uh, you you see these kind of individual incidents, but it's unfortunate. I'm not saying, I'm not condoning the no, such I know incidents, you know. I know but you I'm know. saying overall, yeah. uh, the the uh, the processions of Maryam, uh, Imran Khan, and uh, despite the language of Gandapur, uh, still went peacefully. Everybody talked about it, or media hype, and yeah. this and that. But and people were freely advocating, freely attending uh, the jalsas and the processions of Maryam, and also the government, and also yeah. People's Party. So Just, I think that trend should continue. Uh, yeah. in, in the major general, when general election comes. Sh Shafakat, it's, it's, a, it's a funny old world, isn't it? I mean, obviously, precedent has that whenever a party is in office in Islamabad, in Pakistan, then the following election uh, in Azad Jammu Kashmir generally tends to be that party. And that's what's happened here, the, the same pattern uh, as well. How do, you, how do you assess that appointment of Sadar Abdul Qayyum Niazi as the new prime minister, Sultan Barista Sultan Mahmood, former Prime Minister, not getting a, uh, that particular role and what impact your uh, party will have on those uh, coming years? I think it's a positive step because, look, uh, Sultan Mahmoud has been Prime Minister for two times and I think him and then Sultan and the Aston we were not agreeing uh, with each other. We were saying, if you make him a Prime Minister, I will be happy. The other was saying the same thing. So I think they said, OK, we'll have for somebody else then. You know, if you both have been uh, uh, funny about it, Sultan Mahmoud might be made president, as rumours on the on the horizon to be made president of mm. Azad uh, But if, uh, going back to, I just want to tell you about Maryam and others in the country. She never mentioned Narendra Modi. They never talk about Modi and what he's doing to the Kashmir. They obviously, Imran Khan sold out Kashmir, and it was under his government that the 370 article came. But the point is, it was a, uh, because they got two third majority. Uh, Modi got it, and this is RSS agenda. That's why this happened in uh, uh, Kashmir, and that's why there's been a lockdown for two years. So to blame everything about mm. Kashmir and Kashmir ki beti, she couldn't even mention Modi while in the campaign. I think that tells me. And then on top of that, Nawaz Sharif had the audacity to meet the Afghan minister who made really, really vile remarks about Pakistan, and he, he, he met him. And I think that a lot of damage to you know, yeah. in the South Kashmir, um, and that really upset people of South Kashmir. Yeah, so um, lots of comments as well on social media. We're coming towards the end of the programme, and I just wanted to kind of reflect on that election in 2023. Let's go to you, Amjad Malik. What does the Pakistan Muslim League Noon PMLN need to do over the next two years to get themselves ready for that general election and win it? I personally think they should commend their team, uh, especially the, the people who were in parliament uh, and their leadership who face all these prosecutions and still maintain um, uh, their political and public positions. Uh, nobody defected. They carried on with the uh, the popular slogan of their Qaed. And I think they if they should, if they devolve and go to the grassroots level, take their party to the grassroots level by reorganization and take that slogan back to the uh, to the ground at the grassroots. I think they can manipulate uh, from this uh, default by default because the performance and common man, the suffering of common man and also on the achievement point, I think they may be able to make a mark in general election if they remain intact uh, and keep a uh, connection with the general public, uh, keep the momentum. So because for the opposition, it is very difficult sometimes uh, in com as compared with the government uh, to keep the momentum going and keep the media on that side and keep the noises in this at the social media. So as long as they continue their drive, 
I personally think they will be able to uh, impact in the caretaker setup in the election campaign. Uh, in the minds of the common man, uh, the comparison of Shabash Sharif's performance okay. and the performance of uh, Usman Buzdar, similarly okay. the performance of Imran Khan and that Just of Shabash Sharif okay. and Isad I'm, Dar. I'm, I'm, Thank you so much. And, and finally to you, Mohammed Shafaka, what does Imran Khan and his government need to do over the next two years to ensure that they win the next election and maybe get a majority so that they don't have to rely on these smaller parties? Well, the uh, already foreign policy is very good. They need to, on the domestic level, they need to, the hyperinflation, that's the biggest issue in Pakistan right now, they need to control the inflation any which way they can, which they're saying they are going to, that is the common man and the working class is very, very upset with the council and with them, we're with the common, we're with the people of Pakistan and Kashmir. Uh, leaders come and go, but we want the people not to suffer or have hardships. They need to concentrate on that. They need to improve the law and order situation. They keep changing the IG, especially in Punjab. That needs to improve because still, even in Islamabad, in Baningala, a few days ago, there were some murder cases right next to the Prime Minister's house. That's not good enough, Islamabad. There's been issues recently. Uh, with this domestic violence story you've probably seen. So they need to improve the law and order. It's not good enough to talk about corruption, talk about uh, Medina ki riyasat, and then you have mm. a lawless society. That is the key to uh, improve. Tourism is doing well. They need to improve it more. So we have foreign tourism, which is big business, uh, and, and deliver, deliver more in the next two years. If they get the ball rolling, if they start performing a lot better, and ignore well, Thank you so much. Uh, uh, sorry, Shafakat, I'm cutting you off uh, because we've reached uh, the end of the, our time together. I want to say a big thank you to Amjad Malik from Pakistan Muslim League Noon and also to Mohammed Shafakat there uh, supporting uh, and a broadcaster uh, PTI. Uh, next week, we've got an exclusive interview with the chair of West Yorkshire Liberal Democrats, Kamran Hussain, and Dr. Kramat Iqbal talks about racism of taxi drivers. Thank you so much. Have a great night. I'll see you next week. Asalaamu Alaikum.